Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. That includes Red Circle, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Well, we don't know which is your favorite, but you can go to any of them. You can also find us on the Five Reasons YouTube channel. The benefit to that, in addition to it also being free, is they can find all of our other content on the Dolphins, the Hurricanes, and the other teams in town. Plenty of Panthers content going up there as well. Also, check out FiveReasonsSports.com. Spell that one out. We got new heat writers on there joining Mateo Mayorga and Brady Hawk, and we do not have a paywall. Why would we charge you for that kind of content? And check out the great sponsors in the Five Reasons Sports Network all week long. All week long, we're getting you ready for the Super Bowl. We're going to do a ton of prize pick shows on the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe with Five. F-I-V-E. F-I-V-E. Get your initial deposit matched up to $100 Look, you got one account, open a second account, okay, with a different email address and get more money to play, okay? Use the code 5, F-I-V-E. It is legal in the state of Florida, so no questions there. You can download it from prizepicks.com on the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Again, use that code F-I-V-E. We also want to mention one more sponsor before we start here. It's Mobile C-Arm. Check them out. C-Arm. It's actually c-armandstaffing.com, c-armandstaffing.com. Look, what do they do? They rent C-arm equipment on a short and long-term basis to hospital, surgery centers, chiropractic offices, and pain management offices. Reach out to our guy, Nelson. He'll walk you through the whole thing. They got a form. You just fill it out. He'll get right back to you. He's a huge Miami Heat fan. 561-891-9620. 561-891-9620. C-armandstaffing.com. And now, today's bonus episode. Down to this day. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs, where here's the thing, you can check the score, hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs, just like Buck said, you in trouble, y'all, kept the floor playing, got an all band, y'all seen the block, stop the one hand, and pack with trust, it's power, have the guts, we here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. I got Greg Sylvander. You can follow me at Greg Sylvander. Just going to run a two-man game here today on a Saturday. We're actually leaning up until Bucks Heat tonight. I'll give you the injury report on that in a second, the Eric Rubenstein injury report. Uh, But we are going to talk transactions today because some stuff happened in the national uh, space yesterday. We want to get into how this could or could not affect the heat. During transaction season, leading up to Thursday's trade deadline, stuff happens in real time. So you might listen to a podcast and the information we gave you at that point may not be completely what's happening an hour later because things can change minute to minute. So we're going to try to do things in the broadest possible context that we can. If you want more minute to minute stuff, We really recommend that you try the one-week trial of Off the Floor. It is free. The trial is free. Only after a week will you get charged $3.05 per month. We have kept that price down, even though people have been telling us to raise it. Go to Winno. It's W-I-N-N-O, W-I-N-N-O dot app, A-P-P, backslash Off the Floor. So that's Winno dot app, backslash Off the Floor. Sign up. Give it a try for a week. You don't like it, you can cancel Okay, if you do like it, it's three dollars and five cents a month or thirty dollars for the year. And that's text to your phone. You don't have to log on anywhere. Literally, you will get a text to your phone. And if you want to hide those alerts because you don't want to be bombarded with text, hide it. Come back to it later in the day. It's really simple. All right, let's get to it. The big news on Friday was that Kyrie Irving, for the umpteenth time in his career, has requested a trade. People know how I feel about Kyrie uh, in terms of a teammate. (laughs) Uh, but obviously, Kyrie's a great basketball player. So this came up, you know, would the Miami Heat engage here? Brian Windhorst, who I know very well, Brian uh, obviously has a lot of sources around the league. Brian, you know, put out there that the Heat would be a possible team for him. But as this has gone forward, the focus seems to be more on the Lakers, on Dallas. Uh, Dallas, then there was some conversation that maybe they're not that interested. Here's what I can tell you about the Heat's interest or or, or no no or lack of interest. And Greg, you and I will get into the two ways that you look at this, which is, is this guy a rental or is this guy somebody that you're paying, you know, four years and $198 million or whatever, uh, because that changes the equation here. What I can report definitively is that there are high levels of discomfort among high levels of the Heat organization about dealing with Kyrie Irving on a day-to-day basis. And that has not changed. They did some investigation on him over the summer when all the Durant stuff was going on as well. 
Um, I know that people are just going to point to some of Kyrie's political stands and whether they might fit or not fit with the Arisons and others in the organization. I can just tell you there's been high levels of discomfort with Kyrie Irving for years in the Heat organization. I've had conversations with people, uh, I'm just going to say in the top 10 decision makers on the team. Okay, I don't, I don't like to specify too much. Uh, including some who felt that, that getting Kemba Walker back for Kyrie Irving was a good move for Boston because they wouldn't have to deal with Kyrie anymore. Now, that did not turn out to be true uh, because Kemba flamed out, but obviously Kyrie didn't work out particularly well in Boston, at least uh, in terms of with the city and with other players on the team. But there is a high level of discomfort with him. And so to me, that rules out the second part of this which is would the Miami Heat be willing to give Kyrie Irving what he's looking for, which is why he's asking for a trade, which is four years in the neighborhood of $200 million. I can tell you no way, no chance, no how is what I've been told by, by those who uh, on secondhand basis speak to those high up in the Heat organization. So if you're going to take that off the table, if they're not going to pay Kyrie Irving that kind of money to be a compliment to Bam Adebayo and, and Jimmy Butler at that kind of money, uh, in addition to obviously what they just paid Tyler Hero, then it changes the equation in terms of what you might actually offer for Kyrie Irving. And so the stance that I take on this, and we'll get into some other possibilities we've talked about, Kelly Olenek and others that I put on the off the floor feed. But Greg, what it basically does is it tells you this. They're not giving up any kind of assets for Kyrie Irving because the only way you would give up assets for Kyrie Irving would be if you were planning on keeping him long-term. It's not for a two month rental and a potential flame out. So the only thing to discuss is what would you give up for a rental? And I was told again that they're not going to do that either. Okay. Uh, but you never know how low the price can drop because I don't think there's much of a market for Kyrie Irving out there for a multitude of reasons. And so I'm not going to say there's a no percent chance, but as far as the extension, I'd say the chance is less than 5%. As far as actually getting him in a rental situation, 15% maximum that they would actually make a serious push for that. So I'm not going to say no, 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 but it's no, 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 probably not. Yeah, yeah. I think your percentages maybe are a bit high even because I think another part of this that you didn't mention that is an important distinction to make is that when we checked around, it's not just high level, high level people within the heat organization. There's people in that locker room. There's people that bounce basketballs in that locker room that aren't necessarily so comfortable with the idea of Kyrie Irving being a pillar of what's going to happen going forward just because of, I mean, like, let's be honest here. Kyrie's sick on the court. I love watching him play. There's no doubt he's one of the most skilled players. He's one of the most, um, you know, aesthetically pleasing players to watch. And he damn sure is an upgrade on the basketball court from Kyle Lowry. So I don't think anybody is denying any of that, but he's been not always available and he's brought a lot of drama everywhere he's gone and you can't deny that. And so there's, it's not just, Oh gosh, the heat front office, shame on them. They don't want to go and get this guy because uh, you know, look how talented he is. They're not serious about winning. There's players that are not so all, all about Kyrie Irving at this point. So to me, if there was, if we're going to talk about how low would the price drop, I mean, I guess there's a world where you could say if you could trade Kyle Lowry for Kyrie Irving head up and rent Kyrie for the rest of the year, it's an upgrade talent wise, but that doesn't really make sense long term. And also, I think if we're talking about prices dropping, there may be other guys like John Collins, who I would want to look at and see how far the price really drops just because, um, the price may be less and the risk may be less. So uh, that's kind of where I stand with the Kyrie stuff. I love his game. The other stuff I'm not going to mention because most people know where I stand. So I'm not going to go through it again. Um, it's not going to happen. Kyrie in Miami is not the right fit at this moment in time. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, he loves Miami, by the way, the city that I know he, he always has. And this, this goes back years and years and years and years. Um, so I do think if there's interest reported, it's more from his camp than it would be from the heat camp. So you may hear some of that buzz that gets out there. And look, we did a whole episode about what to do with Kyle Lowry. And so Kyle's not playing tonight, uh, left knee soreness. You reported that yesterday. I don't think that's trade related. I think that's maintenance related and get his head right related. 
Um, I talked to someone uh, today who usually defends Kyle to the hilt, who basically said he's been horrible lately. I, I so this is not. <laughs> It's not just a heat fan thing seeing this. And, you know, the question again, was we tried to discuss on the last episode is, is he done or is he uncomfortable? And the more people I talk to are leaning towards done, which is, I mean, the eye test tells you that he can't get by anybody, but they're going to have to figure out a way to get something out of him the rest of the year. And whether that means honestly shutting him down more before the all-star break and giving him that rest and hoping he comes back rejuvenated at the end of uh, February with the trade deadline passed, then maybe you go that direction. But we're mentioning Kyle because if you're going to get Kyrie, you're including Kyle's contract. I mean, that's the way it is. You're getting off the next year of that contract. And I know how Heat fans will look at it. Well, why not take this incredible talent? And we don't know that Brooklyn would actually even want this. Now, one thing we, Wayne Horse reported, which is true, and I've heard this from many, Brooklyn is in no interest of a rebuild. They don't, as, as Brian mentioned, they don't control their first round pick this year. They have KD still. Uh, they are not rebuilding. They, they've got a roster around KD that's good enough to win a series, regardless of what they do with Kyrie, I believe. Okay, they, there's enough talent there that, that KD being able to win a series. And, and Brooklyn is not the kind of team, if you rebuild in New York, even as, as pathetic as the Knicks have been for 20 years, like you get forgotten. Like you get off the back page, you get all, all the stuff that sort of still matters in New York. Brooklyn's not going into a tank. They never do. They, they they don't never intentionally do that. So they're not one of those organizations. So th they're going to look for a piece that can help them now. Now, whether they look at, at Kyle Lowry as a guy who can help them now, I don't know. I mean, let me just ask you this question. And again, we're, we're talking almost too much about this because I don't think there's any chance that any of this is actually going to happen. But like, I mean, if you're Brooklyn, would you rather have Russell Westbrook? Or would you rather have Kyle Lowry at this stage? Russell Westbrook's a more productive player right now with all of his yeah. faults. Well, and also I think he is, um, I mean, he spent time with Kevin Durant previously. So I, I don't know. I think that there's just all of this to me has always been a signal for Kyrie to find his way to Braun and AD in LA. That was such a prominent thing we talked about over the summer. That kind of smoke never clears. It eventually will creep back around. And so here are the vapors of that. You know what I mean? So I, I really think he's, kind of positioning his way to get to LA and um and you're right like Russell Westbrook has been more productive than and actually this is a really weird thing he's also kind of acclimated to his role as the yeah. season has gone on in a weird kind of way better than Kyle has in certain respects but um Kyle fits a very specific need for a very specific team and I don't know that a team that has Kevin Durant necessarily is that same group um Kevin Durant knows how to get his and he doesn't need a setup man per se so they're looking for somebody who can shoulder some of the burden with the stats and I'm using counting stats just for explanatory <laughs> power you know like Lowry's going to get you know low stats whereas Russell Westbrook can go get you 14 10 and 10 so um, I think that Russ actually makes more sense for them. And it's just also, I think LA is going to be more willing to throw unprotected picks into the mix. If it comes to that, because of the pressure of LeBron James. Two places to me that make the most sense for Kyrie Irving. If there's a trade and again, this doesn't consider who goes back the other direction, Minnesota, uh, I, I think makes some sense for him because uh, they need to salvage this thing somehow. I mean, they gave up all those picks for Gobert and the one of the players they one, show. I mean Walker Kessler looks like a better player right now. Um and, and plus all those picks. And then you look at Phoenix to me. I, I think Phoenix needs to do something because this, you know, after winning the regular season, you know, win total thing last year and then flaming out at home, it's been kind of a disaster for them this year. But they still have enough personnel there to and they they're paying Aiton, they're paying Booker. I, to me, that might, you know, you, you put him in a backcourt there. I know you got Chris Paul, but move Booker to the three. There's other, there's other things that you could do there. Um, I would look at those situations. I do agree with you. He's most likely to end up with L.A. I do not believe he's going to end up in Miami. I, I don't. And, and I again, I know the people are going to point to, you know, the anti-Semitic or the alleged anti-Semitic comments. I mean, certainly all of that plays into it. Obviously, I have a, I have a you know, a, a feeling about that. My issue, my issues my feelings about Kyrie predate that I covered him for a year in Cleveland and I saw kind of how he can destroy an organization from the inside out uh and that was before things got bad in Boston and before things got bad in Brooklyn and I know what LeBron had to deal with in Cleveland with him 
And look, LeBron's desperate at this stage. Like LeBron, I mean, LeBron wants them to make a move. And obviously he feels he and Kyrie have grown enough and there's enough of a respect level there that they can make something work. It's That would be great business for the NBA because it would give them something to obsess about for two hours every day on first take. Uh, but I, I just, I don't think it's happening here in Miami. So I want to make that clear. We're going to get to some other stuff on the other side. I mean, look, if we were trying to pump for views and for subscriptions and all that stuff, I would tell you, <laughs> okay, yeah, there's a good chance of this happening. I, I'm I'm saying you can clip this or not. I, I just don't see it. I don't think that their view on him has changed in any dramatic way from what I heard it was. And no I, home I just, trafficking today from us. Well, we'll get into other things. I think we should. We're going to start to do more of these updates sort of in between episodes, and we will get into other things that maybe there'll be modest hope trafficking. But as far as people, you know, wanting a guy who can get 35, I don't I don't see it out there. And, you know, it's one thing, again, to say that, you know, somebody's value has dropped enough that you can make the low ball offer, which is basically Kyle Lowry and what? Dwayne Den- I mean, Dwayne Denman's deal, essentially. Sounds good. It sounds good on paper. I just telling you, even if they wanted that kind of, that, you know, that got that kind of ham sandwich, like the, I, I don't think, I, I, I don't even know that Miami would move on that. I, I really, I, I, I don't, I, I don't. No, they won't. I, I don't. I, I, I don't think. I don't think they will. And it doesn't mean they don't want to win. I, I know. I see a lot of this on Twitter. They don't want to win. They do want to win. And you can say sometimes that they need to be more aggressive or take more chances. And they took chances on Jimmy and all that. Jimmy and Kyrie are two different things. Jimmy is difficult to handle. No question. Okay. People around Jimmy will admit that Jimmy is difficult to handle. Uh, More difficult to handle in a lot of ways than Braun was more difficult to handle than Shaq was certainly more difficult to handle than Dwayne was for the majority of his career, but, and more difficult to handle than Zoe was, but you know, this is another level, man. Like this is someone you cannot count on this guy to want to play like that. That's a whole nother thing. Like with Jimmy, I know he's missed some time, but it's not because he doesn't want to play basketball or his mind is somewhere else at that point. This is a, this is a different deal. All right. We're going to get to some, uh, a few more nuggets here before we go. And then we'll take you up until bucks heat. Uh, We do have an injury report for you here today. Our injury reports here, personal injury reports are sponsored by our personal injury attorney, reach out to ericrubenstein.com. That's ericrubenstein.com. You can also get him at 954-829-ERIC, 954-829-ERIC. Eric uh, went to school down here at St. Thomas University. He's a Miami guy. You see him at the arena all the time. You see him with Meek Mill, too. I don't have any personal injury attorneys around Meek Mill, uh, but this guy is. You can find him at Ask About Me. I got you. Ask About Me. I got you on Instagram. Or check him out again, ericrubenstein.com. Or 954-829-ERIC. All right, injury report coming up until tonight. We also will have a pregame show hosted by Jonathan Ramakan at 7 o'clock on the YouTube channel. No Kyle Lowry, as I mentioned, left knee soreness. Oladipo and Vincent are both kind of iffy as we speak tonight. So their backcourt could be extremely thin. We already know the front court is thin. Yurt's not back yet. No Orlando Robinson for roughly a month. Dwayne Dedman seems to be unplayable at this stage. They don't want to play him. It doesn't seem like they don't want to get him injured before a possible trade. I think that plays into it. So we may see more Udonis Haslam tonight in Milwaukee. I, I'll just say, like, Greg, I mean, they blew this trip in Charlotte. Like, they, this is, you know, they should be 2-1 and one at this point, and tonight should be a house money game where they could just kind of play loose. They blew this game in Charlotte. I, I wish, you know, as great as Bam was in the last game, I wish he'd shown up in Charlotte because they probably would have won. And I wish Jimmy had shown up uh, in, in New York because if either of those two thing, things happen, they're at worst probably two and one on this trip instead of one and two. I, I mean, the goal tonight, you're just going to have to bomb away from three, I guess. Milwaukee's going to give you some of those looks and just hope for the best, essentially. Yeah, but I mean, if Bam, Jimmy, and Tyler are playing – we are in a spot where I don't want to hear excuses. They should be able to compete with any team in the league. And um, Bam, Tyler, and Jimmy are playing. So this is the weird thing with this team, right, Ethan? It's like they go to Charlotte, lay an egg. They go get a gutsy win in Cleveland. They go to New York and don't lay an egg, but they lost a game they should have won with Jalen Brun- Brunson out. There's no doubt, right? So then, like, history tells us what happens. They go in and get a gutsy win in Milwaukee, and they lose the next one to a bad team. 
ultimately what this is showing us is that they are who they are. They're inconsistent and they're kind of, um, you know, they're, they're going to be the sixth seed. Like that's essentially where it's at, you know, for better or worse. Um, that's where they're aiming for. So I think they do have an opportunity obviously tonight to beat a good team on the road, but, um, there's nothing we've seen recently that suggests that they're not the same inconsistent group. And I don't know that anything between now and Wednesday when they play at home against the Pacers at night before the deadline that we're going to really see much different either. Uh, the other thing about this, uh, one thing I was told was the goal is to avoid the play in avoid the tax. And that that's not, that's not what someone told me, but I know that's part of the issue because they're not paying the tax or in any circumstances this year. I, I saw Barry's report about paying for a star. There's no star they're going to go get. So it's an easy way to say, if we get a star, we'll pay the tax. They're not paying the tax this year. If they were going to pay the tax, they would have just, they would have gone with more than seven or eight or nine players for that whole stretch. If okay? Kevin Durant, if Kevin Durant, all of a sudden, that's were it. To find right. a way to go to Miami. That's the tax. Otherwise pay. they are not paying the tax. Correct. They're not, they are not paying the tax. So the goal at this point, as I see it, is avoid the plan, avoid the tax. Otherwise, you wasted all that time, you know, going shorthanded uh, and try to avoid Boston and Milwaukee in the first round. I, I think that's the goal. Like you hope that Boston and Milwaukee finish one, two. Uh, and so you get out of that that area and you deal with either a diminished Brooklyn, which that's the other that's the side part of this is that Brooklyn's going to come back a little bit if they trade Kyrie, because regardless of what you think of him, he's good. <laughs> I know they're not winning with him alone. They don't win without Durant. We all know that Kyrie is not a true number one guy because uh, he doesn't do it on both ends, all right, and he doesn't set up his teammates enough. But to me, uh, you know, that's one of the benefits of this is Brooklyn may get push pushed back to you, and if Brooklyn and Cleveland both push back to you and you could actually – get on a little run finally and leave the Knicks behind, then you could look at that four or five seed, which is where you ideally would like to be. And then you definitely avoid Boston and Milwaukee in the first round. Also, we're going to see a lot of these tweets. This one just came out for Rush um, Markazi and everybody's freaking out. Arash Markazi covers the Lakers among other teams. The Lakers announced Russell Westbrook has been downgraded to questionable for tonight's game in New Orleans. We're going to be watching all this because you'll start to see some guys sit over the next week that could potentially be traded. Um, I do want to mention one more thing, though, before we go, um, which is, well, uh, Kelly Olenek, uh, because you and I have talked about him quite a bit. We've been posting on the thread, and I had conversations with a couple of people who tell me not only does the Heat organization have fond, fondness towards Kelly, which we know, but key members of the Heat roster would like to see Kelly return. So – and I'm saying key members. There are only so many key members, so you guys figure it out. Uh, you, we know who he clicks with and he has relationships with. And, you know, look, I know this does not excite Heat fans um, unless it comes, you know, in a package with a Jared Vanderbilt and possibly a Malik Beasley or something else where you can add other things to the roster. But as Brady has said and Alex has said and we've all said, like if you're looking for a short-term fix for a lot of their problems – and a guy you know who you know is a locker room guy who the players are comfortable with who has – you know, a contract that just has a partial guarantee next year that doesn't push you into the tax. Like he's a fit, like there's no question about it. And he's also on a team that doesn't really need him long-term that is just trying to collect as many assets as possible. I know Danny Ainge runs that team that makes things a little more challenging, but I don't think KO is a guy that he's going to play hardball with the heat with like he would with Donovan Mitchell or something like that. And I, I mean, he, he gives you again, a, a four playing next to Bam is kind of interchangeable. We know the Kelly Keeper stuff. Their numbers together were always very good. I know what Heat fans are going to say, that he wasn't playable in the playoffs a lot of the time, and that's true. But you you need a body in there who knows the system, is comfortable with Spo, can shoot and stretch the floor. He isn't going to rebound, okay? He's not going to block shots, but you know that he's a good positional defender. I mean, I like it as a backup move. Like, that's a move yeah. that – you know what I mean? I, I, it's just it's, – it's like, to me, it's fine – but I, I, there are people who think it's more than fine. I can tell you, like this is something that key guys on the team want. Like they 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 see like they see their problems and they see this guy fills it. And you could plug him in as a starter and put Caleb back in his natural role, which is something else that I like, and it balances the roster. So uh, I'm I'm in on the KO th as they explore other stuff. I, I'm if they add KO at the deadline, I'm not going to say, okay, it's a great deadline, but I'm going to say, okay, they addressed something that they needed to address to at least give themselves a chance. Yeah. It's like they fortify themselves to your point. If Brooklyn takes a step back, if Cleveland continues to look weird, um, 
you know, maybe all of a sudden you vie for a home court seat. And I think that like the heat have to look at it just from the perspective of, yes, there's been some up and down games, but they're still within a striking distance of that four spot. And you have teams in, in front of them that are in weird positions, um, themselves so right you go and you get a guy like kelly olenic who's familiar they do circle back to their guys he would fit kind of what um they need at this exact moment and here's the other thing like first i hear i catch wind of utah being a team that they're talking to uh, about a number of guys i mentioned jared vanderbilt initially kelly olenic comes up you hear kelly olenic independently kelly olenic's been reported by others uh, throughout the league, uh, independent of us. I just feel like when you start to hear that name connected in more places than one, that's something that we should perk our ears up toward. And then the other thing, uh, as we close here, Ethan, that, uh, I wanted to ensure that our listeners, um, were aware of, because I think it's important is that you and I both continue to hear that it, it, it appears as if the two teams um, other than Utah that Miami has been most in conversations with are the Toronto Raptors and the Los Angeles Clippers. And I find that interesting because both of those are what I would perceive to be tied to Kyle Lowry yes. type deals, right? Yes. Um, so, so that makes for interesting things to look ahead towards as well. No doubt. And I also both have players that could help the heat, whether it's the stable of wings and fours that they have with the Clippers. And you also could potentially get, you know, a point guard option in there like a Reggie Jackson. And then you take a look at, at Toronto and there's the two big guys there, uh, Siakam and, and Ananobi. Uh, but there's also some other pieces down the chain there that might have interest. And that's an organization that the heat are fairly comfortable working with. Uh, they're also comfortable working with Lawrence Frank with the Clippers. So, you you know, I, you know, like I said, we've, we've heard that there's been some conversations there. They're going to talk to a lot of people. And so, you know, you can't, every time there's a report, it's like, this is why people get upset because there's certain national, you know, uh, aggregation accounts that like to just post all the heat stuff. And we happen to produce a lot of content regarding to that. So sometimes we get quoted there as well. And everybody's like, well, we're always putting guys on the heat, never get them. Well, that's true. It's just that, they don't release a lot of information. So we have to sort of figure out by talking to other teams, people around the league, other sources close to the organization, who are they talking to? And so we'll hear, okay, we heard they talked to this team and talked to this team. But the reality is they're talking to a lot of teams. The phone rings, they pick it up. They say, okay, we talked to this guy. We talked to that guy. Sometimes deals develop. We all remember the Dwayne Wade coming back to Miami thing, right? That did not start as a Dwayne Wade conversation. That was just a casual conversation between Andy Ellisberg and Kobe Alton and who talk. Okay. And Kobe was like, you want Dwayne back? And it was sort of like, you know, this is how these things happen. You know, the phone rings and, and you pick it up and you discuss. I just want to, before we close here, thank, first thanks to our sponsors, PrizePix, c-armstaffing.com, and of course, ericrubenstein.com. We also want to mention Better Edge this week. Sign up using our code 5RSN there. That's the number 5RSN. I'm thinking of changing it to make it complimentary with another one. For right now, it's 5RSN. You get $20 to play peer-to-peer -peer legal sports betting. We're running tournaments for the Super Bowl all week, and I'm going to give away additional prizes. So in addition to winning on Better Edge, you're also going to be able to win merchandise from us. Uh, I got plenty of stuff here. So I got Heat stuff. I got Dolphin stuff. We're going to do giveaways this week. I do want to mention one thing, though, before we go. I mean, if everybody's like Kelly Olenek, he's averaging 28 minutes a game this year. He's shooting 49% from the field, 40.4% from three. Easily would be leading the, the heat and three point shooting. And he's doing that on a team that was not supposed to be good this year. He's shooting 83% from the line, which fits with the heat. Well, the heat shoot well from the line. We know Kelly doesn't get there a lot. Five rebounds. It's okay. 3.3 assists. I mean, you're adding another, we know he's a playmaker in, in the, in the front court. He's averaging 11.5 points. So whether you look at it, his counting stats, the, the, uh, the overall, he, he's just, he's had a good year. Like, I mean, this is not a declining player. This is, Virtually the same player that Miami had before. He's 31 years old. Jimmy likes him. Bam likes him. Key players want him back. You figured it out. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.